Hello and welcome to the Wonder Woman of Aviation podcast. My name is Natalia. I'm here with a special guest in a way, kind of a king in his own respect in the YouTube <laughs> world. <laughs> and how fitting because we found a beautiful aircraft here that was once owned by the king of rock and roll. That's right. Can you tell us, well, Jimmy, I mean, most people know who you are, but I'm going to start out with, for those that don't know who you are, can you give me a description, just an adjective of who is Jimmy? Uh, the redneck of aviation, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So I normally I find abandoned airplanes or airplanes that need some love. We go in, we fix them up, we try to get them flying, the ones that can fly. And the ones that can't fly, we try to find them a new life where they can go on to just help other people around aviation or serve some greater cause in aviation. Okay, that was going to be my follow-up question. Like, what is your mission statement? What is your purpose? And you answered it just great, wonderfully. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, it feels like we're in sync here. That's right. <laughs> so, getting to the star, the, the king of rock and roll in its own respect, um, the aircraft. So, this was the Elvis aircraft. Does it have a call sign? We're still trying to figure that out. Okay. We, okay. we keep calling it the Elvis jet, but it's okay. more like the Elvis mobile, like a wiener mobile, Elvis thing. We, we have no that. idea. It sticks because yeah. I know there's the Lisa Marie and then there's the Hound Dog. So Correct. I mean, yeah, let me know when you work on that. We'll yeah, or if you if you know, put in, you know, let us know. Send a comment or yes. throw something in there. And oh, what good. suggestion name do you have for this weird contraption <laughs> that, that we're, that we're doing? That awesome. Disgrace land Disgrace mobile land. or something. I mean, there's, I there's options, yeah. right? So there, that's your goal, ladies and gents, to help find a name. So let's talk about the aircraft. Tell me a little bit what, what type of aircraft is it for those that don't know aviation, for those that aren't as familiar as yourself. Um, and let's get into the nitty gritty of it. All right, so we're going to nerd out for half a second. It is a 1962 Lockheed Jetstar designed by the same guy that designed the SR-71 and the U-2 spy plane which is pretty stinking cool. That's why it's so pointy, so I ah, can go faster. Okay, okay. It also had four jet engines on it, which were incredibly loud, designed somewhat for the military, for like generals to go places and things, which is why they wanted four engines, but that was also why it ended up not flying again. Okay. And now the ownership history of it, it was first purchased by the Morton Salt Company, so the little lady with the umbrella on the, okay, the thing, yeah, okay. same company. And I, I, crazy enough, one of the pilots that used to fly for the Morton Salt Company, this airplane, was able to tell me a couple of stories about flying it for that family and flying it to down in South America and, and Utah, I think, and in the salt mines where they had it. Okay. So they owned it until 1976. That's when Elvis bought it in December. Uh, strangely enough, he only owned it for a couple of months. And then they did a couple of things inside as best I can tell based on the 337s, which for non-aviation people is the records that you have to do if you make any changes to an airplane. Okay. Then they sold it. Uh, Elvis personally owned it, uh, according to the FAA records again. Then he sold it to the Sheik of Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. So go figure that. It went, you know, <laughs> on that side of the world. Then about a year later, roughly, it came back to the U.S. and was owned by a commercial real estate developer in California. Also, strangely enough, he ended up going to jail for some sort of fraud stuff or whatever. Okay. Right, go figure. Very colorful people. Then uh, the final person that was flying it, Mr. McKay, Roy McKay owned it. I think, I don't remember exactly what year he bought it, but the last time it was flying was 1983. Okay, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, and there... And there's still magazines that have his name on it from 1983 inside that we found. It is, it's like a time capsule. It's absolutely mind blowing. Oh yeah, if you haven't checked it out, you've got to go in yeah. there. It's, it's amazing in there. The inside we've never touched. All we've wow. ever done is vacuum it and wipe the wood off. And it's exactly the way it was that I found it, that I bought it as 18 months ago from being in the desert. And again, we go by these dates that we know for sure. Okay. The last time it flew was 1983. So you have not touched the interior, so it kind of still has the the aura, the, the full of, aroma. Like you have like, smell of vision, <laughs> and it's in a good way. I heard somebody describe it. It was like going to grandma's house. Going to grandma's like, house. It immediately a boom right to grandma's house. It has that same like a weird odor of cigarette every once in a while oh, wow. with like some, you know, what what's the. Uh, uh, the stuff that they use in material to keep it like embalming fluid oh, and yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> formaldehyde. That's right. They use that formaldehyde or something. Aroma. I'm like, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's, it's, okay. it's, but it wasn't moldy. It wasn't musty okay. and like dirty, it, okay. but it was just this 
nostalgic vintage yeah, smell. Yeah, it takes you kind of back into it does. In time, which is pretty cool. And that's what I love what you do, your mission statement. You kind of bring people into like the history of aviation. You try to preserve it. I'm going to go back to the, the king. <laughs> I'm oh, calling yes. it the king. Um, so, well, go back to the aircraft. Like, how did you find it? Like, were you an Elvis fan? Like, it's just so random. Uh, you know, I don't know why more people don't do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, so it, I was, uh, I had somebody send me a video okay. that Meekum Auctions was going to be auctioning off this airplane, a jet once owned by Elvis Presley. And then I saw how many people watched it and I read the comments and stuff like that. I'm like, holy cow, Elvis still has a lot of prominence. He still has a big draw worldwide. And then of course my channel and my thing being abandoned airplanes, right. I'm like, yeah. man, we got to find a way to do this, do something with it. Right. Of course, half a second you look at it and go, okay, that's never going to fly again. Right. Right. What do we do with it if we know it's not going to fly again? Well, how do we share this story with as many people as possible? Right. And I thought, well, we got to make it mobile. And what more epic, crazy way to do it than to make it drivable? Wow. So we actually drive this down the highway. <laughs> cool and, we, and and I mean the divine intervention yeah. and just how everything came together in the most amazing way. This motorhome chassis, this 38 foot diesel pusher was donated to our charity Wings of Compassion. Okay. About a year before I even knew about the jet. We it was donated okay. to us. We thought we were going to be able to use it to help our our veterans and things, but it turned out the motorhome part of it was just a piece of junk and not really usable. Okay. But by that time is when we had the jet. And I started looking and I started measuring and I'm like, hold on a second. We're measuring like, <laughs> no way. And we have not modified anything on the motorhome chassis wow. to make it fit and work absolutely perfect. It's, it's mind blowing. Oh it, yeah, it was like Freightliner designed this to have a jet star put on top of it. So you were meant to have it. Yes, I 100% believe that with all my heart. Uh, you mentioned you do drive it, so one of the questions that I, I got from someone, a viewer, <laughs> was does it create any lift when you're driving down the road? I mean, obviously, I mean... I mean, it's pointy. Airplane. It's like a bullet going down the road. Uh, okay. No, not really. It's okay. We're not going fast enough, and the okay. wings are not on it. Okay. I mean, some air might get under here, but it okay. cruises at 65, 70 miles an hour. For all day long well okay. as much as until cars get next to you and want to take a bunch of pictures and okay. all that kind of stuff and then they you got to kind of slow down for that but okay otherwise it drives down the road our Just first like, drive was to here okay so we finished it saturday we said we got to leave on sunday 1659 miles wow. and it was the first time we ever had it on the highway that is pretty also cool. the first time we ever put fuel in it so oh. there was a lot of yeah. we don't know what's going to happen <laughs> but we're going we're going to do yeah. it <laughs> We just brought tools with us. We figured we'll fix whatever breaks on the way. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I, I was doing a little research and one of the questions I had personally was you spent a, you spent a night in the aircraft, right? Before you yes. purchased it. Yep, out um, in the desert, yeah. Did you get any, like I'm big into like those vibes. Like did you feel like Elvis vibes? Like what was the most like random, I guess random fact or is there anything that you could tell us like about it that evoked the king? Invo <laughs> yeah, evoked the king. <laughs> When we spend the night in it, the vibe I got was hypothermia. <laughs> it was 19 degrees in that thing, and we full on pulled the bear grills and abandoned it and went to a hotel. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my 24 hours really turned into 24 hours total, just not in a row. Okay. It was like right. it, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning or one or something. It was so cold and just <laughs> we were about to die. So we're like, all right, we're out. Okay. We went to a hotel. We came back the next okay. day and finished it. But I will okay. say, <laughs> in the video, so I set up a peanut butter and banana trap. Oh yeah, you guys yeah. gotta watch the video if you haven't watched and it. And at the <laughs> end, you know, we and we had a trail camera, <laughs> and we do have what some may suspect. <laughs> as an Elvis-like object that took what? that peanut butter and banana sandwich. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, I I'm just watch it now. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, we have it on film, but some say Elvis was there. So you made your own little ghost trap there. I, we, hey, <laughs> we, we didn't, you never know. And it was Roswell, New Mexico of all right, places, all right? right. Yeah. Which is like the king of UFO places. Oh my gosh, so, it's like the stars are yeah, in the line. It is, <laughs> yep. So we're like, we're finding some UFOs, Elvis coming back, we don't know. Wow, that's crazy. A uh, couple of final questions before I let you go. What's a random fact about the aircraft or what's the most common question you're getting? This is the first time it showcased here in Oshkosh. So it showcased anywhere. Okay. Yeah. 
the most common question we get is, wait, you drive that on the road? How is that legal? I love that question. Everybody asks, like, how are you able to legally drive this on the road? The motor home and the title and registration is attached to the chassis part, not the house part. So the VIN number and all that stuff is on, on this part down here, not the house part that, it, that they build. Okay. So Freightliner builds them, then they send them to these different motorhome manufacturers and they put whatever house they're going to put on the top of it. Okay. But they already have a title and VIN number and all that stuff. Okay. So we, it was already licensed as a motorhome and in Florida there's no state inspections. So we just took the plate off of the old motorhome and right back on the new one. Wow. And we've only done some minor cosmetic adjustments. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. And if anybody asks, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So that's a bathroom in the back. It's a motorhome. A functional bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. That's crazy. So for those that aren't here at Oshkosh, where's your next, uh, I guess, event or where is No the... idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, I, I, my only goal in my entire existence was get it to Oshkosh. Okay. Yeah. Mission Tomorrow we leave. I don't know what route we're taking home. <laughs> That's, awesome. that's how like Oshkosh was it. Nothing came nothing after that. Beyond that. Nothing that's, after that's that. That's the life to live. Obviously. Yeah. And for those that can, where can they find you? For those that don't know you or just getting to know you here. Yep. Two ways. The, the if you want to learn more about the story of this, if you go to ElvisJet.com, okay. it'll send you straight to the video when I bought it at the auction, and then down the rabbit hole of this build you go. Okay. Uh, if you want to see our website, you can. Just go to save the 310, save the 310.com. Okay. That's just our website where we sell our t-shirts and whatever. Okay. Or just Google Jimmy's World and you'll find me on YouTube there. Okay, cool. And your proceeds go to help restore their crops. Yeah, correct? so in okay. this, okay, the other thing is you paid an insane amount of money for such a big piece of junk. Are you ever gonna get your money back out of it? Okay. So what we do is we cut up the wings because we'll not be able to use those okay. for anything. We cut them up into memorabilia pieces and we sell those. Oh. That way you can own a piece of Elvis history and, and own a piece of this project in the jet. There's only a certain number of those made because we were only had enough metal to make so many. And once we sell those, that's how I'll get my money back out of the cost of everything to acquire it and build it and everything. Okay. What we do, we charge $10 a person to go in and that $10 goes towards Wings of Compassion, okay. our veteran aviation nonprofit. So that helps fund that, that mission uh, to serve veterans through aviation. So that's where all the money, of people paying to go in and out of it, all that money goes to that mission so that we can continue that journey and to be able to help, help more veterans and help other people. And that's a very important mission is, is giving back and keeping that history alive, right? And that's what I love about what you're doing. I'm now a fan, obviously. <laughs> well, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for taking the time. For those of you that are watching, definitely check out his website. Donate. They can donate on the website as well. Yeah, if they want to donate, they can go straight to wingsofcompassion.com. Wingsofcompassion.com. Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you, everyone. See you next time.